think the only way that they get there, to M. Rob's point, is Jalen is 100% and he is that dynamic weapon in the run game because that creates your offense on the outside and your one-on-ones. Clearly, Jalen isn't comfortable reading through a defense in a drop-back pass scenario. Some would say he's not even good at it. And I think that when you look at this team, you have to have a serious conversation if you're Philly. And you have to really say, is it better for us to play Marcus Mariota right now and let Jalen get really? fully healthy? Ooh. Because I would argue that it does not matter if you're the number one seed. Because if the 49ers come into Philly yeah. again, they do not care. Yeah. They do not care. If raining in Philly doesn't matter. But, but Irrelevant. You're the coach. You're Nick Sirianni. You go up to Jalen Hurts. He's oh, like, I'm dude, you, I, I, that's I can be a play, crazy coach. Conversation. I can play. How are you going to tell me after I just got paid? We do all of this stuff. I'm in the MVP runner. We just had a board up there oh, reading his MVP odds, and now you're going to tell me telling me to sit. Big picture, brother. Like you, know, that's like you have to do. Like if you're Nick Sirianni, this is the type of decision and conversation you have to have if you have a big picture mentality. And I think you can have that conversation honestly with Jalen. And if you set him down, that's all Jalen talks about is the end result and getting to the Super Bowl and winning that thing. The best way we can do it. They didn't run the football at all with him. They, no, they twice. Didn't. They didn't. That's not they it, didn't. man. That's not the winning edge. Put Marcus in there. Win a couple games. Yeah. Maybe you have the number one seed still. You might have it. I'd say he's probably better playing quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles oh. right now. Right now, he would be more productive. Hey, I didn't say right that, now. Philly. Later, I didn't say that, when Philly. You're healthy, hey, we'll hey, see I know you what time it is. Jaylen. I didn't say that. He said. Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It may be a little bit noisy. I've got. A uh, 20 foot piece of gutter, a 20 and an 18 foot piece of gutter that's actually hanging out the back of my truck. It's got to go through the window. This is the thing that I miss. I miss Big Red. Big Red used to suck up the gas, and I mean suck it up. It didn't matter if you had two tons of gravel on it or an empty bed. You were getting 11 miles, 11 miles a, a, a gallon. That's it. Um, but it was nice because you could put all this stuff on the roof rack. Well, you know, Black Star here. It's great gas mileage, about 20 miles a gallon, but it's only got a six and a half foot bed. So you kind of have to open up the window and let this shit just kind of hang. So you got to do what you got to do, man, to get the job done. So the clip I was playing there uh, this morning when I got up and I did my morning video and stuff, I saw this and at first I was just like, people are calling for Jalen Hurts to be benched. And I know Philly fans will turn on a dime. They will turn on a dime and give you change. They'll give you a nickel and five pennies, just like that. They will literally love you in the first quarter once you're dead at halftime and then want to go buy you a drink at the end of the game. They're worse than Cowboy fans. And I listened to uh, David Carr, you know, the car crash, you know, another one of the Dan Orlowski types that were a failed quarterback, although he does have a ring thanks to Eli Manning and sitting on the bench, but was never the guy that they thought he was going to be. He was the number one draft pick. But, of course, he famously threw better than Dak Prescott at the Carnival Sideshow at a Super Bowl. And people said, Dak is trash. Let's get David Carr as a quarterback because they always want anybody other than Dak. But be that as it may, I listen to that, and I'm kind of like, you want to bench Jalen Hurts for Marcus Mariota? Mr. Subway? Yeah, Mr. Subway. Yeah, I, I don't know if you ever saw the when he was about to be drafted, and Subway had a Marcus Mariota-like bus made out of deli meats. It was hideous. Every time I go to Subway, I see that. And it's just like, I can't eat here. I just can't eat here. Be that as it may. He was making some decent things, and, and I was with him until he said Marcus Mariota is playing better than Jalen Hurts, or is a better option. And that's when it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm not quite there with you. But then, you know, before I left, I was sitting there looking at the numbers, and just like I said that I think the Cowboys broke A.J. Brown, because you remember, A.J. Brown was kicking ass and taking names, having 125 yards a game 
the first game that he's had 100 yards this past week, and be it some of that was in garbage time, was against San Francisco. But after that Cowboy game, he came way back down to earth. So I started looking at Jalen Hurts' stats since the Cowboys. The Cowboys must have put a hurting on him, and you also saw him being looked at for concussion protocol there, you know, against San Francisco. San Francisco, they some bully mother humpers. Let's be clear. They gonna kick your ass and make no bone. They they gonna let you know, we came here to kick your ass and we gonna do it. And on the way out, they're gonna say, pick your shit up, wipe yourself off, because we coming back to kick your ass again. But Jalen Hurts' numbers, they ain't that good. He's had like 160, I think 295, 100 something passing, and I want to say four TD passes and like four interceptions. And if you look at his numbers before the Cowboys games, where he was also running the football real well, in the last three games, I think it's only been like 120 yards. You know, we all know that he's had some issues with the knee. Uh, wearing the sleeve and things like that, although he's never listed on the injury report, and so on. The the question I have for Nick Sirianni, who I always look at as, he looks like a vampire. Let's be clear here. That pale face and the red eyes, he's got the beady eyes. Oh. You know, I, I, all, I just need to see a drop of blood just coming out the corner of his mouth. If it were night out, nighttime outside, and you came around the corner, and you saw Nick Sirianni, you'd be like, man, <laughs> ah, Dracula lives. He looked like he's 10,000 years old and he wants to fight today. Yeah. Jalen Hurts gets smacked where you need to take him to the locker room and get checked and you're getting blown out. Why is he still out there? Why is he still out there? You see what happened to Trevor Lawrence getting stepped on. You're going to tell me that a guy who might be not a little silly with a bad knee that that can't happen to him? Because that is your season. But, but again, my quarterback, he usually gets pulled by the fourth quarter because they kick an ass and blow people away. And mind you, mind you, I want you I want y'all to understand this. When we talk about Dak Prescott and his numbers, understand that over this past game, of course, he played the whole game, but like four games, four games previous, Dak Prescott was sitting in the fourth quarter. It's like a whole game of statistics if not added to his numbers. You know, so when people say he gets garbage time ones, they take him out before garbage time even begins. So you look at that and say his numbers are even better than what you think, but be that as it may. Should the Eagles actually bench Jalen Hurts, keep him on bubble wrap until the playoffs? Honestly, yeah, I, I, I'm actually surprised when I looked at the numbers. He is kind of going down here. And this is where I say, you know, when, when they talk about, they go back to the Dallas versus um, the 49ers. And I'll have more on that later. I've got a long trip for some construction, and it was literally an hour to go you know, 10 miles. But you look at the numbers for the Eagles, their defense is getting worse. Uh, another one of their safeties looks like he's done for the season. Um, the Kobe Dean, do we know if he's going to come back? I know they got Shaq Leonard. He's going to have to be plugged in immediately and not necessarily knowing the whole defense and the scheme and everything else. They're on desperation mode. But this, you know, I look at this and say, this is a must-win game for both teams. For the Cowboys, we need this game to shut the doubters up and to build some more confidence that we are a team that can beat winning teams. For the Eagles, you don't want this slide to continue where shit rolls out of hand because you have been living with games where you've had double digits comebacks to win. That's not a winning formula for long. You can do that for a while, for a few games, but you keep falling behind and Jalen Hurts isn't the guy that he was. He's not running like he did last year. 
and your defense is not the same defense it was last year, and your offensive line, it's not quite, it's good, it's really good, but they ain't quite as good as they were, so you have less margin for error, but hey, you know, I am an Eagles hater, and a Dallas, Dallas Cowboys content creator, so of course, I'm going to be throwing shade at the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good people. I appreciate you. Because without you, you know that this shit don't work. Hope y'all have a great day. I got a couple more hours uh, sitting here by myself to my thoughts, listening to the talking heads and the nonsense that they bring us. And uh, who knows what kind of shit will come out of here. All right. Peace.